SpaceX's Starship's second orbital flight test is just around the corner. In exactly two weeks after returning to the production site, later yesterday morning, SpaceX rolled Booster 9 and raised the massive booster onto the orbital launch mount before the evening. From the beginning of the trip from the Mega Bay to being in place on the launch mount, it's only less than six hours. Impressive. SpaceX is using Using its monster Megazilla more proficiently by the day. Super Heavy Booster 9 transported back to the orbital launch pad at Starbase for additional pre-flight testing, SpaceX stated in an official tweet. Hopefully this will be the final rollout for Booster 9's pre-launch campaign. Although the launch pad is not too unfamiliar with Booster 9, this time around marks the maiden occasion in which it rests upon upon its throne, adorned with a crown. The king of rockets, maybe? Hopefully so. The number nine is a lucky number after all for SpaceX. Take Falcon 9, for example. So far, Booster 9 successfully conducted two cryogenic proof tests and a full cryogenic proof test last month. It also completed spin prime and static fire testing, the first time with the new Deluge system. Planned for just under 5 seconds, the actual duration was around 2.74, with 4 engines shutting off prematurely. It's impossible for us to ascertain whether any of them have been replaced given that all of Booster 9's engines are currently concealed. To be fair, SpaceX is not trying to hide this. In fact, the bells need to be clean. While other rocket makers install their engines in a clean room, Starship does it all in an open environment and transports it on a dirt road without any protection. So covering them protects them from atmospheric effects and debris. But now Booster 9 is on the orbital launch mount, where it'll undergo a critical static fire test of its 33 Raptor version 2 engines. During the test, engineers perform several critical tasks to ensure the engine's readiness and overall system performance. The booster will be fueled with liquid propellant, a combination of liquid oxygen as the oxidizer and liquid methane as the fuel for the Raptor engines. Engineers meticulously handle the propellant loading process to avoid any leaks or potential hazards. If they conduct a full duration static fire, the vehicle remains grounded while the Raptors fire for several seconds or minutes depending on specific test objectives. Engineers collect data on engine performance including thrust, chamber pressure, and temperature readings. This test will validate the repairs and upgrades made to Starship's launch pad, but also it'll serve as as a pivotal milestone in the preparation for the second flight of the world's most powerful rocket. According to history, Booster 7 only did one 33-engine static fire test. I expect it to be, hopefully, the same with B9. And if the next static fire test is successful, they'll stack the ship, which will allow for fit checks with the ship quick disconnect, which is now higher on the tower to cater for the extra height due to the installation of the hot staging ring. This ring will enable the ship to separate from the booster in flight after igniting some of its raptors while the booster is still burning three low throttled engines. This system will replace an earlier, more complicated separation sequence. And if all goes as planned, I'm guessing SpaceX can try to push for an early September launch. Despite progress made, the exact time frame for the orbital flight attempt remains uncertain. Certain. It all depends on whether testing goes as planned and SpaceX obtaining regulatory approval to perform the launch before the year ends. The company faces regulatory challenges with a coalition of environmental groups suing the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration over concerns about the potential impact of Starship launches on the South Texas ecosystem. Assuming that testing proceeds smoothly and that the lawsuit does not affect the launch timeline, then 
we'll see the next fully integrated test before the end of the year. The aerospace company is determined to advance space exploration and is taking necessary steps to ensure their testing operations are all completed in a safe manner. Speaking of the progress of Starship, Polaris Dawn is the first of three missions in a program that will culminate in the first crewed launch of this Leviathan. In a recent interview with the CNBC Manifest Space podcast, Jared Isaacman said that the mission is pretty far out there, noting that SpaceX still had a lot of progress to make on Starship before flying people on it. Clearly it's going to need a lot more uh, launches and, um, and that design is going to have to evolve to the extent that it, it's going to be safe for uh, for human spaceflight. He also unveiled that the first flight of the Polaris Dawn mission will likely be delayed to some time in 2024. That mission will fly Isaacman and three others on a Crew Dragon spacecraft that will spend several days in low Earth orbit. We're making a lot of progress. We're still hoping for the end of the year, but I suspect it will probably slip into the beginning of the next year, he said in the brief interview. This should be expected. It's a test and development program. When Isaacman and SpaceX announced announced Polaris in February of 2022, they scheduled the Polaris Dawn mission for as soon as the fourth quarter of 2022. However, by last October, the launch slipped to at least March of 2023, which the program attributed to the readiness of the vehicle and training as well as the schedule of other Crew Dragon missions. A delay beyond the end of this year would likely push Polaris Dawn later than the beginning of 2024. Axiom Space is planning its third private astronaut mission to the International Space Station in January of 2024, followed as soon as a month later by NASA's Crew-8 mission to the station, both using Crew Dragon spacecraft. While Polaris Dawn is not going to the ISS, the availability of Crew Dragon spacecraft and other resources needed for crewed missions could delay Polaris Dawn to later in the year. In the podcast interview, Isaacman suggested the delays were linked to the development of a new spacesuit required for a space walk, the first by a private astronaut mission planned for Polaris Dawn. Since the announcement of the Polaris program, one option that has emerged for the second mission is a crew dragon flight to reboost the Hubble Space Telescope. Isaacman participated in a NASA briefing last September that announced an unfunded Space Act agreement between NASA and SpaceX to study such a mission. NASA has not disclosed the outcome of that effort, but confirmed in May that the study was complete and that the agency was internally evaluating the findings and working to determine next steps. The agency also received eight responses to a separate request for information from companies developing satellite surfacing technologies that could reboost Hubble. And for our last bit of exciting news today, India's Chandrayaan-3 probe is attempting a historic moon landing in just a few hours. India's Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft is scheduled to touch down near the lunar South Pole Wednesday around 8.34 a.m. EDT, 6.04 p.m. Indian Standard Time. That success would make India just the fourth country after the Soviet Union, the United States, and China to ace a soft landing on the moon. At the time of making this report, the Chandrayaan-3 mission had been smooth. The spacecraft launched on July 14th and successfully entered lunar orbit on August 5th. On the 17th, Chandrayaan-3's Vikram lander separated from its propulsion module, setting the stage for Wednesday's touchdown try. That attempt will come near the lunar south pole, which is thought to be rich in water ice. No probe has ever explored this region on the ground, though Chandrayaan-3 won't be the first to give it a shot. If Vikram sticks its landing on Wednesday, it'll deploy a small rover named Pragyan onto the gray dirt. The two robots will then study their surroundings for about one lunar daytime, which is roughly 14 Earth days, using a variety of science instruments. This attempt will be the second lunar landing attempt for India. The first in 2019 was unsuccessful as the nation's Chandrayaan-2 lander suffered problems during its descent and smashed into the grade dirt. Chandrayaan-2 wasn't a complete failure, however. The mission also sent an orbiter to the moon, which remains active today. In fact, Vikram has established two-way communications with the Chandrayaan-2 orbiter, according to ISRO. And that's all, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link 
in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.